Applause. That's because it's the first of the year and I'm everybody's New Year's resolution, right? <laughs> so um, you see all the lights and cameras. So we are live streaming this. And this is like really important to me because what we're going to do today, this is what I think is the Holy Grail, the Fountain of Youth. This is everything. I'm going to give you some of my secrets to stay youthful. Right, you saw the uh, DVD and I was 53 there and I will be 64 April 20th. Wow. If you want to okay, jot that down, April 20th, 1947. <laughs> so the whole point is I, I really feel that I found the answers to staying young and youthful. I feel that using my own body as my laboratory, I've come up with a bunch of answers that in reality you all know too. We all instinctive, instinctively know how to take care of ourselves. We're animals. We know. We, we were born with instincts how to take care of ourselves, but we've forgotten. And the whole world is cluttered with so much information and misinformation and myths and you know the whole world is doing it so it just feels okay. You know, we tend to believe just because the axis of the world has gone around one more time, we're supposed to grow older. We're supposed to get tired. How often do I hear people say, well, you know, I'm getting older. No, you're not. The human body's meant to last several hundred years. Do you understand that? <laughs> several hundred years we're meant to last. So this dying off at 40, 50, 60 is a travesty. It really is. And everybody is accepting it. You've become like little gerbils just accepting this information and this reality that isn't your true reality. So I've come up with some answers to help you. And it may not seem so strange because, like I say, we all intuitively know this. So I'm going to throw some information out. If it feels good, put it on because I'm not here to talk you into anything. I don't want to convince you of anything. I don't want to debate my ideas and theories <laughs> with you, you know, because everything isn't for everybody at every moment in their life. And I have no judgment of any of your choices. And hopefully you don't have judgment of my choices. I get judged all the time. You have no idea because I've been doing this for 42 years, you know. I go into a party and people go, oh, there she is, or, you know, hide your meat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or the one I get the most is if I have a dinner party, eat before you go to Karen's. <laughs> you know. And I, why judge me? Why not just give it a chance, give it a try? And that's all I'm asking you today is to have an open mind, hear what I have to say. If it feels and sounds right, then you might want to do some of it, you know. And if it doesn't, just let it pass you on by. It wasn't meant to resonate with you in this moment. All right? So there's no judgment. There's no right or wrong or good or bad or yes or no or my way or the highway or this is the only way to do it. It's all about taking in new information that you are ready to listen and learn to. Taking in new information that you are ready to use. But now, here's the other deal. Just because you hear me say it today and it sounds right doesn't mean that you're going to be able to leave here and do it just like that. You know, we tend to think we're supposed to go from A to Z overnight on everything. Lifestyle and food changes is the only endeavor in our lives where we expect to hear it once, read about it once, and do it, right? You don't read a book on math and all of a sudden you're a mathematician, especially not me, I can't add. You don't read a book on law, law and all of a sudden you're a lawyer, you know? Nothing. It takes time. Everything takes time. And everything is a process. And that's what we're missing in our world, the process of everything. Everything is so instant. We expect to go to A from A to Z overnight. So this is why all of these surgeries and things are so popular because A to Z, I want it done immediately. But here's the deal. If you work with yourself, if you work with your body, if you allow the changes to happen in a comfortable way for you, do you see what I'm saying? A comfortable way for you, not what I think is right for you, not with some book with a table of this is what you should do, eight glasses of water a day, 35 grams of this. There are no tables for your life. We don't all breathe the same air. We don't have the same stresses. We don't handle things the same way. So how can a table, someone else's table, work for us? So what I've learned and what I teach is how to help you find and wake up and realize your table. What's right for you in this moment. And that way you can live with it. You can work with it as long as you're not expecting perfection from yourself and to get it overnight. I mean, it used to take, what, 70 days for an egg to hatch and now they do it in 28 days. You know, everything is instant, instant, instant. And this instant is killing us. 
Literally, you're speeding up the life process much faster than it needs to go. Over and over and over again, everything, you know, I got to have it instantly. I've got to do it right away. You know, you can't even wait for water to boil three minutes on the stove. You got a microwave oven it, you know, and have it done in seconds. And let me tell you about your microwave, folks. I know they say they're safe, but they are selling them to you. All right. You are being radiated. Water is a catalyst. It takes on whatever you put in it, which is why we put cucumbers in our water here and lemons in our water and different things, because it takes on the properties. So you're taking on radiated water. Do you understand that? Because you need instant. You need it. You can't wait for it to boil. And what are you doing with this extra time? Are you spending more time in the park and taking long walks because you got the extra five minutes from microwaving your food? You know, you're just accepting all of these things. And, and I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I'm saying what you need to do is start educating yourselves and you figure it out for you. Maybe you still want to microwave your, uh, your, your food, you know, but at least you realize what you're doing. You're changing the molecular structure to the proteins in the food to something your body doesn't even recognize. So do you understand one in two people in our lifetime will have cancer? That's every other person, you know, we're streaming, so I'm kind of like trying to stay in the camera, and these people are there in front of me, okay? Anyway, <laughs> um, every other person in your lifetime will have cancer. That's one in two people. When I used to teach 10 years ago, it was one in four. Before that, it used to be one in 10, because I'm, I'm going to be 64 years old. So I've been around quite a while in this whole war on cancer. So that it's every other person you know. And we just assume we've got to be frightened, because cancer is going to get us. It's going to come from out here somewhere, and maybe get you, or you, or you. So you live in fear. We're living in fear in our lives of everything, touching each other, being in the same room. This is pretty bizarre. This world that we have assumed is okay and it's all right. And we're going to live it and we're going to, you know, do the best that we can. But cancer isn't, yet we're all born with predisposed weaknesses. I was born with a lot of weaknesses. All the women in my family died overweight and young. My mom died at 48, my grandmother died at 50, and my great grandmother died at 60. So when people look at me and go, oh, you got a good gene pool, uh uh, didn't come from a good gene pool which is why I started doing everything I'm doing and why I was so motivated to stick with it. And the motivation came from the more I did, the better I felt. And the better I felt, the more I did. And that's what happens. You know what happens in the negative world? The more you do, the worse you feel. The worse you feel, the more you do. You kind of play on everything you're doing. So it's about breaking that cycle of negativity. It's about educating yourself. It's about learning about the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given in your life and giving every bit you have to that. Because here's the deal, if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how beautiful your home is. It doesn't matter how smart your children is or how great your husband or your wife is. If you're lying in a bed with tubes in you or you're being rolled up to a building, these crazy buildings, everybody notice all these uh, dialysis places now they didn't have those when I was growing up everybody's being rolled up to these mysterious it's kind of like science fiction to me you see these ambulances pull up and you know, people are going in to get on these machines and people are accepting that it's normal but you see this is a recycling machine a regenerating machine you get new cells every seven years every seven years you get a whole new thing of cells and you have trillions of them and every three months you get a whole new set of tissues in your body. So this body is in an ongoing cycle of recycling itself. That's what it's intended to do. You'll hear me use God a lot because I strongly believe in him, but it doesn't matter if you believe in God, Buddha, Jesus, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it. There is a major plan here, and the plan is in place. That's why you're here. But you're here, there's a plan to go with you being here. And the reason that we're so miserable is we've stepped outside of that plan. We are so far away from the way God intended us to live. We've totally stepped out of nature. We're living in cities. We're not living with the oxygen. Do you know when man was created, the oxygen levels were at 38%? After the Industrial Revolution, they were down to 22%, and we're now living in the teens in terms of oxygen, in the teens. And some places like Gary, Indiana, they have 9% oxygen. All cancer cells, all herpes viruses, all viruses are anaerobic. They can't live in an oxygenated environment. So do you understand? Forget everything else you're doing. You're not even getting it from the air you breathe, and that's not your fault. 
or maybe because you're asleep a little bit and we haven't risen as we need to to change the world but you see this is how you change it by changing you by changing your information by changing what you accept for you it isn't about me handing you some wheatgrass going here you need to drink wheatgrass it's about you making yourself healthy strong and awake and it just kind of flows out to everything else around you so number one you got to take care of you before anything else and that's what this place is all about it's about helping you to uncover what you already know everybody's walking in front of my camera and he's standing right in front of it okay <laughs> um, it's about what was I saying it's about taking, care of you. taking care of you it's about realizing and putting all of your time and your money and your information and everything that you've got into you and here's the deal when you do that it spills over into everything else in your life and I know that to be a hundred percent true because I am the most selfish person on the planet I take care of myself before everybody and everything and look at all the people I'm able to help you get it you take care of you and then you're able to help it's just like on the plane when they say put the mask on you first before you can help somebody else it's the same thing so if somebody's gonna come up to me after class and they're gonna go uh, my aunt so-and-so really needs to take your class or so-and-so really needs to do this or I wish so-and-so well you can't worry about them because if you're sitting there overweight and coughing and miserable with eczema or whatever you can't tell somebody else what to do it's just like I choose all my teachers by how they look Dr. Wigmore who was my main teacher could do cartwheels at 87 I'm gonna listen to her Dr. Schultz, who was on Channel 11, telling everybody how they needed caffeine and it helped with diabetes and all these other things that he was talking about to do it with. And then at the middle of his conversation, he said, and after my third heart attack, and I thought, wow, you've had three heart Why am I going to listen to anything you said? You've had three heart attacks. So it's about taking care of you. It's about taking information for you. It's about spending your money on you. At one point in my life, I was homeless without food for my children, seriously. And I worked three jobs and bought a wheatgrass juicer, a hand one. That, that was the first thing I did. And I truly believe that that was my journey to be where I am. Because I started taking care of me. Because I was very sickly. I had all kinds of things going on. And now I'm strong and I'm healthy and I'm older and I have no idea what illness is, what tiredness is. And I'm supposed to be going on cruises or lunching now. I'm opening up more restaurants, you know. So you don't have to put a ceiling on your life. You don't have to put a ceiling on your healing. Because I'm this age, I should be doing such and such. Who's to say what you're supposed to be doing at what age? I'm 64. I take a professional advanced ballet class with girls 22 and under. Am I as good as them? No. But I'm in the class. Okay? I'm in the class. It doesn't occur to me that I shouldn't be there. It doesn't occur to me, oh, I'm middle-aged, I shouldn't be doing this. Because Karen, it isn't... You're not pregnant, are you? <laughs> Funny you should say that. Because when I did go through the change in my 40s, my husband and I did go out and buy a pregnancy test. And I was going through the change. But anyway, because <laughs> it never occurred to me. I had no other symptoms that I was going through the change of life. And it never occurred to me that that's what was going on for me. I felt as strong, as sexual, as happy, no tantrums, no mood swings. Nothing changed absolutely nothing changed and I'm here to say that's for each and every woman I won't say everybody each and every woman in this classroom we don't have to be a victim to tell us what's supposed to happen you're supposed to find your own laboratory and work with it and that's what this place is all about to help you find your own laboratory and work with it